Hello students, today we're going to talk a little bit about uh, the invertebrates that are mollusks and the invertebrates that are echinoderms. The first section as we talk about mollusks will help us understand things like the, this uh, squid in the upper left corner, this octopus over here, and that's a beautiful octopus, a snail, a this looks like some kind of clam, and then down here is a funny looking guy, he's called a cuttlefish, I don't know if it's a he or a she, but it's a cuttlefish. <laughs> Uh, the very the top two, the squid and octopus, belong in a group we call the cephalopods. Uh, they call it cephalopod because the root word ceph means head, and we know what pod means. So when you see something that it looks like just a head and some feet, it's a cephalopod. Uh, the snail and things with one shell are called univalves. Everything down here is the, called a bivalve. All of these things have a few different characteristics in common. For instance, they are all invertebrates with soft, unsegmented bodies. They're often protected by a hard shell. You don't think that the octopus and squid has a hard shell? Well, it has one inside. The clam and the squid have a shell that we can see. All our mollusks have a, what we call a mantle. It covers the internal organs and helps protect it. It's sort of a fleshy part of the body that protects internal organs. And then they have a foot. Not necessarily a foot that like your foot, but one the, that the mollusk uses to crawl or dig because snails are crawling along and clams need to dig down in the sand or soil, usually the sand, to get away from uh, predators usually. And then the other thing the foot can be used for is for getting food. So let's take a little bit more look at some mollusks. That the foot, uh, the snail is, is extended here. You can see there's an antenna on the snail and and we're looking at it maybe through a piece of glass or something and from that the underside from the underside right and then uh, that foot is out here trying to uh, help move it so it can creep along that foot on the snail actually also crawls over rocks we'll hear about that in a second and to help it get food uh, now this mollusk this squid we think that's a squid because it has more than eight legs um, has <clears throat> legs and uh, more than more than just a foot but that those are also used for movement also mollusks get energy remember uh, when all living things need to get some source of food the snail over here is scraping bacteria and algae right off of rocks if you have one in your aquarium you put a snail in there to help you clean the glass to keep it from getting algae growing on it uh, they also that foot will help collect particles of organic matter dead organisms or poop that's also known as in scientifically speaking, fecal matter. <laughs> uh, and that's all picked up uh, with the mucus that is sec secreted by this foot. Uh, some mollusks eat, eat fish, the larger ones, the cephalopods, will use this beak. That's Is that the beak of a squid? It looks like So maybe an octopus. but yeah. And that beak will help them capture and pierce their prey. I have a wonderful video here, thanks to Abdullah, who gave us this video he found of a octopus capturing something you wouldn't even think that an octopus would go after. So let's watch this together. Is it going yet? Should we? Oh, oh. Okay, here we go. It's on its way. Ah, it's okay. I have a question for you. It's okay. a battle between octopus and crab, and who do you think would win? Well, I, I think octopus. Really? They're, they're bright. They're very intelligent creatures. Well... Right. Of course. <laughs> would be, wouldn't you? Uh, a spectacular Watch this. scene, really, captured this video in Western what? Australia. A spectator there, oh, you can Amazing. see the crab minding his own business when an octopus daddy. jumps out of the water <laughs> and onto a rock. We don't think this is ever captured out. before. Fascinated. It then pulls the crab back underwater, startled. and it's not every day that you see an octopus hunting on land. Who it's knew Lisa. this could happen? Scientists are saying, though, it can Walking happen across the land. Any shore. Maybe it's evolution. That's strong, isn't he? Mm. It's a tiny octopus, too. I think that you'll want to watch that again on your own, so I'm going to get out of this, and we're going to go back to our presentation. And we're going to go back. Here we go. Sorry. Perfect. All right. And Return then, full screen. okay. And now I think we might be ready to hear about, oh, no, we still have a little bit more. So uh, mollusks will be, uh, they, they mostly are sexually reproducing. Um, some snails are, are, they have the ability to self-fertilize, which means that they are just producing male and female sex cells. 
but it still takes a male cell and a female cell to make an offspring. Mollusks do have lots of responses. They respond to their environment all in all ways. They, there are hormones that are released in water. There's temperatures they respond to. An octopi can also just change their color to blend in with surroundings, which makes it very convenient if you're down on the sand trying to not be seen so you can attack some unsuspecting mm -hmm. crabs. So here, oh, by the way, they're also having a much more developed nervous system. Uh, the, even snails have a more developed nervous system, and an octopi even have a real brain. So here comes, I don't think they do calculus, but they are, but they are. Um, <laughs> maybe someday. Maybe, I mean, it oh. looks like they're walking on land now, so. <laughs> All right, so now here's Ms. Detman to tell you about echinoderms. Okay, so now on your chart, we're looking at the phylum of invertebrate animals called echinoderms. And these would include some, these are some examples of animals that belong to this phylum. We've got up in the left-hand corner, this is called a sea cucumber. It's beautiful. It is a beautiful and um, very interesting animal. This is um, actually a sand dollar. We see them usually at the beach along the coast when they are, they've lost the animal. The animal that's inside has died, and so they look more white, but they're actually very beautiful and colorful animals. And that's then the bell. We, we'll keep going. <laughs> and then we um, have sea urchins that belong to this group, and then a whole variety of different sea star species will belong to the echinoderm group. So what are the characteristics? Because those animals all look very different. They have in common the following things. Um, echinoderms are invertebrate animals that have a sort of internal skeleton. It's not a true skeleton like yours and mine and other vertebrate animals, but they have really a system of fluid-filled tubes that gives them a little bit more shape um, than other invertebrates. And that tubes are filled with water, <clears throat> not blood, which is a very interesting arrangement. Uh huh, and also convenient since they live They're in the water. The water. <laughs> <laughs> they have what's called radial symmetry, which you've already learned about, meaning that they can be um, cut in any direction and they'll have matching parts on either side, um, kind of like a bicycle wheel. They use their system of tubes to move around and to get food and oxygen. So, speaking of moving around, how do echinoderms get around? They use these things called tube feet to help them move, and all of them have these tubes on the underside of their body. Um, they get their energy in a variety of ways. Some of them are what we call filter feeders, similar to what we talked about with sponges. They filter the food out of water. Some of them are actually predators, and they will eat things like shelled mollusks, um, and I'll show you this video clip in a moment. And some, um, like sea urchins, can actually grind up corals oh or scrape goodness. algae from rocks. Here is an actual video footage of a sea star eating a um, shelled mollusk. So take a look. I've Pretty heard that fascinating. Uh, if you're an oyster farmer, you really hate starfish because they are fish. They are predators, and they they are going to destroy your crop. This is it. Oh. We're oh, waiting. Here, here we go. Awesome. Look at those tube feet going to town. Those are full and of no. water. Yeah. Crazy. And they're sensing, they're sensing that, um, oh, we lost it, but that's okay. You got the idea. Um, and they sense that that mollusk is something edible. And so they, op they pry it open and, and eat it. And if you just search for... Okay, so we ooh, have we five go. sea urchins here. They're fresh from the market. And they're uh -oh. too uh -oh. Sorry, Too folks. many, too many. Too many things going on here. The most interesting thing I think about that that uh, that eating is once they get that that uh, that uh, clam open or that oyster open, they, their stomach comes right out of the hole, right up there. Yeah. And that stomach exits the body and lays on top of its food, digesting the food outside the body, which is really yeah quite strange. And if you uh, just Google that starfish eating a. Uh, oyster or clam, you'll get some pretty cool footage. It's awesome. Yeah. Um, so echinoderms reproduce both sexually and asexually. Obviously with sexual reproduction there needs to be a male and a female, male releasing sperm, female releasing eggs, and just like many other in aquatic invertebrates, they fertilize in the water. Or there is the option for asexual reproduction for many echinoderms where they can either break off or bud off um, an arm that will grow into a new um, organism of that same species, in this case, is some type of sea star.
And echinoderms, how do they respond to stimuli? Well, not super well. <laughs> they have a very simple <laughs> nervous system. All it really contains is a nerve ring around their mouth with a nerve running out through their arms. There is no brain in echinoderms. Yeah. So there you have it. You should have now a completed row on your chart for mollusks and echinoderms. You know, um, the last thing about echinoderms before you before we go, just uh, I've always heard it said that echinoderms are sort of an evolutionary dead end because they're so unlike other animals that, and I think we can see why now they're just so unusual. Yeah. They have so many weird body systems. So good job, students. We'll talk to you in class.